Anderson has won a title in each of the past seven years, but her streak's in jeopardy, as a title has eluded her in 2002. She gets another chance next as top seed at the Naval Station in San Diego. San Diego Open. Competition begins with a breakthrough game featuring three athletes that have already won this season, Michelle Feldman, Mary Andrupo, and Tish Johnson. The one with the highest score will break through to the semifinal match and go head-to-head -head against the woman with the most titles this year, Leanne Barrett, and the winner there will move to the championship match against the only one of our finalists without a win this season, Wendy McPherson. Hello everyone, I'm Jan Schmidt. Thanks for joining us. Experience is the name of the game tonight. Our five finalists have combined for 74 years of tour experience, and together they've won 87 national titles. But three are bowling with added pressure tonight. You've just heard Wendy McPherson's story. The other pressure cooker, the Bowler of the Year race, it's heating up, and here to talk about that is my partner, Kathy Doran Lizzie, who, by the way, shot a 300 in competition. Congratulations. Thank you, Jan. Always exciting when you can do that. It sure is. Kathy, in my opinion, Leanne Barrett is the front runner right now, but by a narrow margin, what would a win mean for her tonight? Well, if Leanne were to win tonight, it would give her a lock on the number of titles won by any player this year, which would be four. Nobody would be able to beat her. That's a great stat to have when those bowling writers cast their vote for Bowler of the Year. Now, Jan, remember, Leanne was our Player of the Year back in 1990 and 91. Eleven years later, this lady appreciates more now than ever the success she's had and is thrilled to have an opportunity to try to repeat such a great honor. Well, for Michelle Feldman, she's never felt the elation of being Bowler of the Year, but it's been a dream of hers her entire life, and Kathy, that was so evident last night when she had a rare display of emotion. Absolutely. Michelle lost the game before a position round, and being upset was an understatement. That loss brought her to tears, an emotion never seen before by this young lady on this tour. But it wasn't losing the game that got her. It was the feeling that she gave away any chance of being considered for Bowler of the Year. She wants it, and she wants it bad. But her experience and determination took over the last game by winning by only one pin to sneak into tonight's telecast. So watch out because Michelle Feldman will stop at nothing tonight to leave here tonight's champion. And she started this match with the first three strikes. She's now in the lead by nine pins over Tish Johnson and by ten over Marianne DeRupo. 22 years on tour. That's a long time. She leaves oh, a solid 8-pin. She actually left a 10-pin earlier on a similar shot when she almost had the 8-10 stand. Ball driving very hard for her. And here's a look at Marianne DeRupo, who also, as I mentioned, won earlier this year. All these ladies have won a title this season. Marianne's been bowling exceptionally well. That was just a great shot off her hand, but carry was a problem for everybody. If you had great carry... All three or four days of the week, you were going to make the TV show. If you didn't, you were going to struggle. Well, Marianne started this game with a big split, 4-6-7. Then she lined it up. She's been in the pocket since then, just a couple of 10 pins. The crowd, Kathy's really into this here at the Naval Base. I think this is the biggest crowd we've had in so long. And they're so loud and supportive. They're really getting into the bowling. And that's exactly what we need. And I think what they need, being the spectator. Well, Michelle is getting into her bowling. Has she been intense or what in the first few frames? I thought she was going to jump over the ball return that Tish earlier. Tish Johnson trailing by 10. You can see this week this surface was synthetic, volume of oil 24 milliliters, length of oil only 36 feet, and it was a defense. We talk about we, we go back and forth between an offense oil and a defense oil. 36 feet isn't very long, but because this is a good surface in this bowling center, the oil really carried well. Scores were high. Tish leaves a seven pin, except for the carry portion, and it was a sport bowling condition, but on, you know, brand new lanes, newly remodeled, it, it held up very good, and... And not all sport conditions are going to be low scoring. Right. And it's all due to 
how good the surface is in the bowling center, how the weather affects the surface. A lot of things go into the, the care and taking care of lanes. And also, you know, depending upon how he puts the pattern down, it could play differently and maybe no reflection on the house. You just never know for sure. True. Very true. And this was the carry problem. Seven pins, four pins, ten pins. You could find a way to knock those out. String four or five. You won games with big games. 227 average to qualify for Tish Johnson. She had a 14 and 10 match play record. Mary Andrupo, 225 average, qualifying in the number four position. And she covers up the four pin. Tish had the highest TV pair average, 247.33. Yeah, That's I, huge. Think, I think she liked this pair. I think she did too. But it's Michelle Feldman who's actually in the lead right now. She's liking it and oh, almost a 710. Oh, come on. <laughs> she, okay, am I angry or should I smile? I'd smile if I were her. I'm time. not sure by that reaction if she feels she deserved it or if she got robbed. Well, awesome reaction off her hand with that flip release. But hits a little light, almost the 710, gets the 10 out. Easy single pin spare, switches to a plastic ball. You know what I find interesting, Kathy? We took a look at um, the strike and spare percentage. Michelle Feldman is 100% you know, on her single pin spares I'm for this fall on television. Place. As you see now, she leads by 11 on our scoreboard presented by Travel Lodge Hotels. And Michelle's the strike person, and yet she's only 38% strikes, 94% spares she picked up, and 100% on single pins. That's not what you would expect. No, but we didn't expect her to make the show last week on a lower scoring shot either. So she's really coming into her own in different areas of her game. Oh, another seven pin for Tish Johnson, who is the Iron Woman on tour. This, Kathy, this is her 235th consecutive national event. Oh. It's a lot of bowling. That's a lot of bowling. I figure we average about 20 events a year, maybe 18, maybe 20, somewhere in that range. Um, that's, that's 11, 12 years without missing an event. As you saw, Marion was fourth with a 213 average on the TV pair. But it went pair to pair. She could go to the next pair, which could be 29 and 30, and she could shoot 260. So it really mattered who was on the pair before you, where they were playing, what surface they had on their ball. A lot of things go into what's going to make you score well sometimes. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Missed. Not a good thing. Miss seven pin for Tish Johnson. Tish really pulled the crowd in in warm ups and was really playing to the crowd. Obviously, um, was their favorite, probably still is, and they're trying to sp try to spur her on to get back on the strikes. Mary and Drupal covering the spare. So, right now, Michelle Feldman in the lead. And her goal was to get out of this first match. She's winning that title to be in contention for Bowler of the Year, so she's on her way. Her goal is is being set right now. But it's never over till it's over. We've seen that too many times. Johnson now down by 23 pins. Darupo down by 13. That was a fabulous shot. Important. Needed to set one up there in the ninth frame so she'll have a shot, depending on what Michelle Feldman does. Marianne DeRupo also still obviously very close here. A 13 pin match. She was 16 and 8 in match play throughout the week. Very nice shot. Oh, oh. Didn't finish. It didn't finish. It looked really nice off her hand, but. It could be the transition setting in. The oil's going to carry down. That way the ball isn't going to react as hard as it did when they first started. The back ends are fresh. They're no longer fresh. She leaves the 2-8. So Michelle Feldman now up by 15 pins. A strike here would make it 25. Oh, no. Ouch, back at you. Same thing, Tish left opposite for the left-hander, right-hander. Marion really gets the ball way right to about the fifth, sixth board, which is where the hook spot was, regardless of where you played or how you played. But it just never recovered. Ooh, and that's yeah. not an easy spare, but that right. was huge. Just taking out the eight pin. Michelle Feldman will need to pick up the nine to maintain her lead here of 
15 pins as we step into the 10th frame. Tish Johnson will be first up. She's working on a strike in the ninth. She's also been working with a sore shoulder. She hurt her shoulder a couple of weeks ago. She's been going for some massage therapy. It's definitely helped, but she's thrilled to be here. Well, she could strike out for a score of 215. She could force a mark out of Feldman. So strikes, very important right here. You could see her high game was 286. A couple of those this week. Definitely not her night to carry. You know, this is only her second show of the year, which is uh, very unusual for Tish Johnson, but she made the most of the first one, winning that event in Pasadena. Well, she's also playing way outside, right up two, three, four, leaves a flat seven pin or a half seven. Carries just not there for Tish. She's bowled a great game. Well, DeRupo would have needed to strike out as well in order to force a mark out of Feldman. So Michelle Feldman approached this in a different manner, Kathy. She said last night she was going to maybe look at it a little more like head-to-head -head against each bowler instead of looking at it as a three-person match because she struggled with that mentally. But she likes the intensity of head-to-head. -head. So, you know, she's going to go at it head-to-head -head against each one. However you have to mentally convince yourself to get out of that match, a very relaxed player to okay, then you meet your next opponent. Whatever you have to do, you have to do it. But it's harder to beat two people than one. Oh, and that seven pin just isn't going well, to Tish. Unbelievable. He said, yep, that's about the most I can do. She pulled a great game. Finishing up with a 194. Marianne DeRupo finishes hers, and, and Michelle Feldman, working on a spare here, will need about six pins in order to secure this without throwing another shot, and I'm sure she'd like to do it right now. That is enough. So Michelle Feldman has the high score in the breakthrough game, and she breaks through to bowl in the semifinal match against Leanne Boomer Barrett right after this. Open are being brought to you by the Women's International Bowling Congress, striving for 87 years to identify and fulfill the needs of women bowlers. By Travelodge Hotels, proud to be the official lodging sponsor of the Professional Women's Bowling Association. And by PWBA.com, your shopping source for the new line of official PWBA merchandise. Final scores in the breakthrough game, Michelle Feldman 228, Tish Johnson 194, and Marianne DeRupo 198. Large crowd on hand, and we're honored to have Caroline Olinger, the San Diego Naval Base Executive Officer, here with us. She was here throughout the week. Real honor to have her here. And Michelle Feldman will start the semifinal match. Well, she got through that breakthrough game, Jan. That was her biggest worry, and look out now. <laughs> Although, right here is the battle of the Bowler of the Year race, minus one person, Carolyn Doran Ballard, who is also in the heat of that race, but not on this telecast, with one regular event left. And Leanne Barrett has everything riding on this as well. You might hear some knees knocking between this week and next week. It is tight. This is the closest race we've had in quite some time here on tour for Bowler of the Year. She comes up a little light. Leaving the 10 pin. She'll switch to a plastic ball to shoot the spare. Look at that average, 231.02. .02. And she was second in average to qualify. Wendy was first with 232. They really, she really boomed them. She did. <laughs> Appropriate for her nickname, Absolutely. Boomer Barrett. Leanne only had five games throughout the week that were below 200. Well, you know, she missed the cut last week. Her timing was off. Everything was going right. You couldn't throw the ball that far right. She went back. She called her coach back home, Rod Ross. He helped her, talked through her with a few things, and she came in this week a lot more loose, a lot more confident. And you know Leanne's a field player. When that feels on, forget it. Your history. She's a striking machine. 
And going high, leaving a 6-10. Now that one there, she probably forced a little bit, which we all do when your carry is a little off. Some of the high scores this week, 11 of 24 match play finalists, averaged over 200. 31-700 series, wow. Easy spare for Leanne. Very important to stay on the spares because the strikes are probably gonna come. So, especially with these two power players, it's very important to stay on the spares. Let's not forget that Michelle's family, who can't be here tonight, Gary and Linda Feldman, along with Bud Harvard, have a 300 award bonus put out there for television. And shots like this are how to get there. Exactly. Something, we don't know what, tapped out the 10 pin, but she's got an early double. $10,000 on the line if anyone shoots a 300. And Michelle has done it before. Yes, she has. Did it on television. Way first woman to do it. No tap of the 10 pin there. She also has two 300s already this season. Now Michelle will also pick up a plastic ball to shoot at her spare. Earlier in her career she didn't. But look at how hard she throws the ball. When she learned to straighten it out, it was perfect. She didn't really have to throw a plastic ball, but now she does. Just to be that much more accurate. Barrett with two spares trying to get lined up here. Kathy, why, she has an odd stance. She's been working. We talked about that a little before, but that's to relieve pressure. She's had a hip problem, so she went home, worked again with Rod Ross once again, and she really worked on a way to take the pressure off her hip in her stance just to get herself started to take the pressure off. It's very important to be comfortable when you start, because if you're not comfortable in the beginning, you're probably not going to be on very good balance at the end. And although it looks a little odd, it obviously hasn't affected her scoring, because she's just bowling out of this world this year. Leanne just averaging 200 on this pair, actually low, considering she averaged 231 for the tournament. This was definitely one of her weaker pairs. First, the three pin, and Kathy, she enjoyed herself this week, and she talked to us last night and said, hey, what a great time. We had tours of Navy ships, the Fitzgerald and the Oldendorf. Did you go on the tours? I went on the USS Oldendorf, and we have to say hello to our Petty Officer Gentry Skinner, Petty Officer Renee Banks, and Damage Controlman Claudia Gawson. And let me tell you, she's the only woman that does one certain job as a firefighter on that ship. It's very, very interesting. Wow controls, gadgets, just like bowling. The technology is overwhelming. Leanne Barrett now down by 12 pins on our Travel Lodge scoreboard. Light at 210. And you'll see Leanne Barrett leave a fair amount of splits or artwork because of the hook that she throws and the lateness of her ball coming into the pocket. Most of the power players, such as Leanne, look at the rotation, what beautiful ball roll she has, such a powerful release. But now it's not getting into the pocket quick enough. She leaves the 210, which is sparable. But she obviously made a move off of going high twice. Oh, and she gave it a run. This fall, she hasn't left that spare on television, so I can't... We can see here she picks up her plastic ball just gets it to the left of the two pin not far enough to slide it over to kick out the 10. I might be a little nervous. There's a lot riding on tonight. Michelle Feldman's average up this year and she quickly up to leave a four pin and Kathy a large part is is her maturity in shooting spares and and trying different lines different equipment things she wasn't willing to do in the past. And I, I'm not even so sure it wasn't she. You're right, she wasn't willing to do it. It's a maturity factor, but I don't think she even knew to do it. Because when you have one thing that works so well, why change it? 
everybody on our show tonight has a title so far this year, with the exception of our top seed, Wendy McPherson, who desperately needs one to extend her streak. But there you see Leanne on top with three. Carolyn Doran Ballard with two. Michelle Feldman with two. And a host of others with just one title so far this year. Two new champions this year, Brenda Norman and Tiffany Stambro. That was exciting last week when Tiffany won the first exciting. event. Big strike for Michelle Feldman. We'll be right back with more bowling from Admiral Robinson Recreation Center. Through four and a half, Michelle Feldman has the edge. Stay with us. As part of this event, the fans at the Admiral Robinson Recreation Center were treated to the first ever PWBA Team USA Pacific Showdown, sponsored by Ebonite International, followed by a dinner presented by 12 Strike. Team USA Executive Director Jerry Koenig was on hand for this event. The event pitted members of Team PWBA, Team USA, Team USA alumni, and Team Australia in a showdown. Points were awarded based on individual finishing positions in each match. The top two teams, USA alumni and PWBA, which included seven of the top eight ranked PWBA athletes, then faced off in a best of three Baker format for the championship. Game one set the tone for the bout as the alumni anchored by Kendra Gaines won 235 to 231 after the Maryland native marked twice in the 10. In game two, the alumni had their chance to shut out Team PWBA, but Liz Johnson failed to carry a double in the 10th, giving the PWBA new life. With elimination at stake, Barrett stepped up to the approach needing a strike. A well-placed messenger took out the 10-pin, giving the PWBA game two, 226 to 217. The deciding game, strikes were abundant for both teams, but it came down to the final shots. Barrett could have ended the alums' chances with a double in the 10th, but Lady Luck went the alums' way. Barrett was greeted with that 4-9 split, and she failed to convert, leaving it up to Johnson for the alums. Needing just nine pins, she left. There it is. The 410. But she easily knocked on the four pin, winning the game 227 to 226. Final score alums 2, PWBA 1. So Team USA alumni took home the championship trophy presented to them by the executive officer of the San Diego Naval Base, Caroline Olinger. Looked like a good time, and we're back in the seventh frame of the semifinal match. We have a showdown of our own going on. Right now, Michelle Feldman out in front by 44 pins. Leanne Barrett on the approach in the seventh can take that to 34 with a strike here. So maybe that's going to give her a little bit of spark of hope here because she's throwing the ball very well. Trailing now by 34 with one more strike. She can take it to 24. So she's still in this match. Needs to put a little pressure back on Michelle Feldman. It's important to make sure that your game is always sharp mentally and physically because if you're throwing the ball well, even if you're in the wrong ball, you could attempt to do damage control not get too far down. Now that she switched balls, it looks like she's gotten a little looser. Her arm swings a lot looser. She shot one of the 300s this week. She was right next to me when she did it. Really? You did as well, and Marion DeRupo as well, who you saw in the first match. Three 300s during the tournament. So far. So far. Oh! <laughs> the break she probably needed. To at least keep her in the game. Huge. Definitely had to strike there. That takes it to 24 pins. Michelle Feldman, though, on a three-bagger. Can take it back to 34. And I wonder how she's feeling now, Kathy. She said it was the most nervous she has ever been throwing that fill ball last night. She had to strike to, to make the show. Well, <laughs> looks pretty comfortable. She looked more nervous last night than she does tonight. It 
was a tight race going in. Marsha Kamrowski was in fifth going into that match. She actually is fifth in average. Bad match play record, though. Liz Johnson, Kendra Gaines, all of them in contention going into that last game. Home 12th with Carol Giannotti Block, who's bowling extremely well coming back after a second knee surgery. And Tiffany Stambro, last week's champion, first time winner. And I really like that girl in 15th. You do? Yes. <laughs> Laura Lee Daniel, another good finish for her. Car Honey Church, runner-up player of the year, back out on tour now. There's our statistician next to me, Tammy Turner. She's uh, sitting in the booth doing the numbers. And I'll focus in on that shot in a minute. Michelle Feldman with a big strike. And all of the Naval people having a great time. Kudos to the U.S. Navy. Boy, they just, they really know how to put on an event. It was wonderful here. Beautiful bowling center. Great support. Everyone's polite, willing to help, give you directions, whatever you needed. It was great. Going up high, you know, so Leanne is just not really ever gotten comfortable on the lanes today. She, you know, we talked about the great time she had the good event. She also did something else at the beginning of this tournament. She had an opportunity to bowl with Pete Rose against Kim Terrell bowling with Tom Arnold on the Best Damn Sports Show, and they had a, a wonderful time. She said they treated them like real celebrities. They were asked to come into the green room, which I guess is the big celebrity room. She says they talked to us like we were really really famous and popular and i said but to us you are well they are absolutely and she said it was a wonderful experience well right now her experience isn't so good at the end of this week best she could shoot would be 212. so michelle feldman pretty much has this in her hip pocket well this was leanne's 98th career TV appearance, I guarantee you she will reach 100 along with Wendy. Well, she still has three titles. So Michelle Feldman will move on, but first we return a sneak peek at who will be inducted into the WIBC Hall of Fame in this week's WIBC Extra Frames. Tread lightly, son-in-law. There are more traps lying ahead than in the deep wood. One of the highest honors a female bowler can achieve is induction into the Women's International Bowling Congress Hall of Fame. The 2003 inductees were recently announced. WIBC immediate past president and life member Joyce Deitch of Las Vegas, Nevada will be inducted for meritorious service. Deitch has been intimately involved in nearly every aspect of bowling for more than 50 years. According to Deitch's WIBC Hall of Fame nomination form, her influence will remain with organized bowling for as long as organized bowling exists. The second inductee in the meritorious service category is former WIBC director and member emerita Bernice Benny of Forest Heights, Maryland. Benny's involvement in bowling in the 1940s helped found the Washington, D.C. area Women's Bowling Association. She's credited with helping to bring 10-pin bowling to our nation's capital and is a founder of the Virginia State WBA. Former Team USA member and professional bowler Linda Kelly of Dayton, Ohio is the lone inductee for superior performance. Kelly was first selected for Team USA in 1988 and joined the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour in 1990. She spent a large portion of her early bowling career in pursuit of a dream to win an Olympic gold medal. And while bowling has not yet achieved Olympic status, Kelly's bowling career is nothing short of world class. WIBC would like to congratulate these three outstanding ladies on their dedication to women's bowling. For more information on the Hall of Fame, including application materials, call 800-514-BOWL or go to bowl.com. Final score of the semifinal match, Michelle Feldman 268 to Barrett's 189. Coming up next, Michelle Twister's sister Svelman takes on Wendy McPherson as she tries to extend her streak of consecutive years with a title. Stay with us. Well, this is more than a trophy. It's a piece of art. It was designed by Boatsman Mate Chief Kevin D. Anglin. And I would 
would love to have that in my rec room, but I won't have the opportunity. Kathy, neither will you. Michelle Feldman or Wendy McPherson will take it home, and Michelle has to know that this may be a huge factor in the Bowler of the Year race right here. She's ready, Jim. And for Wendy McPherson, seven straight years with a win. The record's nine. She needs this win to make it eight with only one more chance. A lot of pressure in different directions going on down there on those lanes. Lisa Wagner holds that record right now with nine years straight. It's not a record that is currently going on, so Wendy would be have the chance to take over that record. Well, Wendy's going to go down swinging. I said last week she's an extremely aggressive bowler, whether the lanes are very oily or whether they're hooking. She always comes out very aggressive, very strong, always has her game plan ready, and she sticks with it. All-time tie list, the Leanne Barrett, Tish Johnson now out. They won't have a chance to move up. Lisa Wagner on top in that category as well. Wendy McPherson only with three games below 200 this week, and 192 was her low. Tremendous week. She's also reached another milestone tonight. First PWBA woman to reach 100 TV appearances. That's a lot of TV time. It sure is, and a lot of experience. Considerably more than Michelle Feldman. But you wouldn't know it by that scoreboard. I have a feeling we're, we'll see a lot of X's. Ooh, going up high, though, with a 3-6. And we talked about this, who would best handle the pressure. And I think Wendy's been there way more times than Michelle and will be better prepared to handle that. Well, you can see on Michelle's face, she didn't like that shot. And she not looks panicked, but she didn't like it. She clipped it a little, which I mean, she gets handsy. And when you watch Michelle's release, she is one that doesn't need to be handsy. She grabs it a little bit and comes up high. Now she chops the spare. So that may even settle her down a little bit, Jan. I'm not sure. It might. She actually completely missed that, missed the, the front pin, the three pin. You can see it slides on the oil on the outside and just gets the six pin, leaving the three. Early in the game, though, 18th event, 18th cash, ninth top five. Huge stats. That's why she's in the running for bowler of the year. Great year. Well, let's see if she can regroup. And she does. She's definitely going to be, she's definitely going to put the strikes together to pick up the opens if she can keep her wits about her. McPherson looks awfully strong. Buried both shots in the first and second frames. Six tournaments, no titles, five top ten finishes, three shows. Very under average for the Wendy we know of the last six years. Yeah, that was actually her swing, just these, just this fall swing, because she had her sixth show of the year. Wendy coming out of the gate with an early triple, keeping herself very calm. Wendy doesn't really show a lot of emotion. And the shootout event is our end of the year event we have every year where the ladies try to strike similar to a skins game. Here's the point rankings. The top eight will make it. And let me count quickly. Liz Johnson, I believe, is number eight right now on that list. That's prior to this tournament. So those will change around a bit. So you can see Marianne DeRupo on the edge. Kelly Kulik on the bubble there. With one more week included. Coming up light, leaving the 2-8. Now, Wendy got that ball just a little bit further right. We said the game before the oil carry down, and it just didn't cut into the pins the way it would on a fresh pair. You can see here she gets a little right, way out to about five. You can see right there the ball starts to roll out, never gets to the pocket hard enough. So she leaves the 2-8. Not an easy spare, but Wendy's a very good player. Oh, did I jinx her? You I did. Not. She is. Um, but Wendy has not been doing so well this fall with her spares. She's only at 69% on her spares on her TV shows this fall. And you can see right here, the ball grabs the dry, goes to the left of the 2-8 and only gets one. It's Wendy only 75% on single pin spares this fall. So that's probably why she hasn't won an event this year. Not 
doing her norm in spare shooting on television. Well, big double for Michelle, which picks up the open that she had in the second frame, chopping the 3-6. If Wendy opened the door for me with an open, I'd be an idiot not to jump all over it because that's not going to happen very often. Michelle Feldman now down by eight. Career TV, they've met three times. Michelle Feldman's won once. McPherson's won twice. And you are right on, Kathy. That open frame has settled Michelle Feldman down. She Sometimes, had to get aggressive. Absolutely. Sometimes it's not the four, five, six strikes in a row that settles you. It's the first mistake. You get so mad, your butterflies disappear. You're back to business. Odd way to look at it, but very normal. Wendy, Tish, Leanne, all millionaires with Alita being the first to do it, now dropping to second. Under Wendy, who's still climbing the ladder with yes, money. Yes, she is. Trying to climb big time tonight. Picks up that open frame with a strike. So we have just a two-pin match right now. Feldman in the lead by two. 228 average for McPherson on the TV pair. She was third. Wendy told us that she tries to win every week, but this week she could see the light at the end of the tunnel, and she really wants that win for that eighth straight year. One more time, one more time. Now she came up high on 21. I remember right. she came up light the frame before, chopped the 2-8. Now she has the 3-6-10, which Leanne was doing the same thing on that left lane, even though they were playing the lanes a little different. The break point was in the same area for everybody. It just determined how you were going to get there. I wouldn't want to have to shoot this. We'll see how she does it. And she covers it up, so it's just... Four frames left. Right now it's Michelle Feldman in the lead by two. Stay with us, see who claims this championship. York played host to the annual Salute to Women in Sports dinner two weeks ago. PWBA and WIBC honoree Robin Romeo Masante was joined by PWBA President John Felzone and many other VIPs at this prestigious event. Robin marched in the parade of athletes along with many of the greatest competitors in the history of women's sports, including Martina Navratilova, swimmer Natalie Coughlin, and Women's Sports Foundation founder, the great Billie Jean King. The evening concluded with Hall of Fame awards and the presentation of the team Sportswoman of the Year, given to former UConn standout Sue Bird. And the individual Sportswoman of the Year awarded to Olympic gold medalist Sarah Hughes. The celebration was a resounding success and a tribute to the power of women in sports. Right now, Michelle Feldman in the lead by 11 pins. She struck and left a 7-pin while we were away. Kathy could have been a 7-10, but it was a great shot. It was a great shot. Wendy McPherson back into it. Very close match, just 11 pins. And I'll tell you, the top seed has won 12 of 15 singles events this year. It was 12 of 13 until the last two weeks. And the two winners have come up the ladder like Michelle's doing tonight. Well, now Wendy's gone high, light and a pocket strike on the left lane. It's going to be very interesting to see what she's going to do on lane 21 coming up light and high. Well, Kathy, you asked Wendy what it will take for her to actually win tonight. I'm going to go into it with the attitude of bowling the way I had bowled all week. Um, I was very pleased with my performance, and I think if I can come through with how I did all week, it, it just might be a win. Be, and she has a strike up. Big shot right here. She just cannot keep that ball on the right. Lane 21's her problem. She struck every time on lane 22, Kathy, but 21's been light, high, and high. Here you can see it looks like a great shot off her hand, but then just never stays, never even stays right of the head pin. It even tried to cross over, which means the lanes are really hooking on the back end on lane 21. Covers up the spare, and I know Wendy was happy that her dad, Chris, came out. He's been here this week, and, and I know she wanted to say hello to Kendall Lee, her niece, 
five years old, she keeps saying, Wendy, do you see me when I'm on the show? So I, I know she wanted to win for them, and it's still a close match. Yes, Michelle has to perform here. She knew it too. Her ball cuts in so hard, you can see it. Look, right onto the, the head, the face of the head pin and crashes in three pins. Actually, which could six have been going a, late. Which yeah. could have been a split. And from the looks of those pins, Jan, not a very nice split. It's 11 pins right now. A strike in the ninth would take it to 21. She's not taking any time. fired this one make sure it got to the right the lighter hits were better this week blows out the seven a pin comes across boom and she loved this she was airborne off her feet <laughs> that is so great Mindy McPherson business at hand must strike here and she does sets one up in the nine perfect on lane 22 every time Unfortunately, she'll have to end on lane 21 where she hasn't hit the pocket since the second frame. And she needs to strike out her max score possible, 226. It would force Michelle Feldman to mark. Actually, actually, she'd need the first one. And nine spare strike, we could have a tie. Oh, boy. Exactly. <laughs> I couldn't take it. Okay. A much better shot by Wendy. She obviously moved left to give the ball a little room. Wendy throws the ball nice and hard, which allows the ball not to do too many funky things, but still a little high on the head pin. Almost leaves the 4-9, trips the 4, only leaves the 9. Really needed the 9 pin to go to, though. Wow, and, she, you know, she just... That was a pretty good shot, you're right, compared to the last three frames on that lane. She had to take a guess. And that's such a hard thing to do. It was her choice, too, which lane to finish on and when to finish. I think she wanted to put the pressure on Michelle Feldman. It looks like she needs about six pins on this shot. She's working on a double. I asked her earlier, you barely snuck in. Do you think it's destiny? She said, I think it might be. Here she is. And it is enough. I don't think she can believe it, Kathy. She had all but given up at one point last night. Over. She goes, well, wait, I have to finish the match. She's so disheveled. She doesn't know what lane she's on. A lot of pressure riding on this, and she prevailed. Oh. That's okay. That's the place to do it. So Feldman captures her third title of the year to Ty Barrett, tightening up that bowler of the year race. It's a big one. Stay with us. We'll be back to talk with her. Big pack fins Monday night. Can a 500 team contend? BCS, who leapfrogged who? And Vince's future uncertain off shack circle to David Sports Center. The championship round finals of the Greater San Diego Open are being brought to you by the Women's International Bowling Congress, striving for 87 years to identify and fulfill the needs of women bowlers. By Travelodge Hotels, proud to be the official lodging sponsor of the Professional Women's Bowling Association. And by PWBA.com, new and improved with more advanced and accessible news and information. Michelle Feldman has won three times this year. Her first win came at the St. Clair Shores Classic.
With breaks like those and other powerful strikes, she went on to defend her championship at the Louisville Open for her second title of the year. And of course, she is your champion here at the Greater San Diego Open. Final score, 236 to 204. And Michelle, you have a great trophy coming in designed by Chief Anglin. <laughs> and I guess Michelle. you won't take it. Thank you, Michelle. It's um, been great. So I love the ball. Thank you. <laughs> what a fantastic piece of art. And Caroline Olinger, the, the executive officer here at the San Diego Naval Base. Uh, Michelle, I'd like to present to you on behalf of Naval Station San Diego and the Admiral Robinson Recreation Center, these fans and those sailors, a check in the amount of $9,000 for your victory today. And we hope we can see you again with a great performance like Thank that. You. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Miller. I'd like to thank uh, Travel Lodge, and uh, I'd like to thank, uh, thank Ebonite and uh, WIBC, and everybody here uh, at the Naval Base. It's been great all week. Um, it's different when you have to show an ID to get into a Boeing Center. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, you have a question for Michelle? Well, Michelle, last night you barely squeaked in to make this telecast. I asked you tonight, did you think it was destiny? I thought it was destiny. I just, I felt it down deep that I needed to win tonight. And I, I put all I had into tonight. So uh, it uh, came out positive. Uh, I got myself back up there and hopefully I can bowl well next week. Are you going to spend some of the check in Vegas next week? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what does, what does Bowler of the Year opportunity, what does Bowler of the Year mean to you if you were to get that? That's the biggest prestige honor you can, you can win on, on the ladies tour and on any, on the men's tour, any, any you know, any, sports so if i can win that i think that would make my career go up for the next few years and it'd give me confidence for the next you know hopefully 15 years i'm out here um i just i, I really want to bowl well next week it, it means the world to me for me to win bowl of the year well you did a fine job tonight congratulations again michelle feldman captures her 11th career title and it's a big time for a victory don't miss the Storm Las Vegas PWBA Challenge from Texas Station in Las Vegas. That's next Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern. For Kathy Dolan Lizzie, I'm Jan Schmidt. Thanking you for being with us. Until next week, stay safe. So long from the San Diego Naval Base. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.